I'm saying hello today on August the 5th, 2010, from a beautiful spot in Ontario just outside Peterborough, the Lang Pioneer Village. With me here, historical expert and local history interpreter in traditional costume, I might add, is Julia Gregory. And she is kindly taking me around the whole property and showing me all the interesting parts. And uh, I wanted to actually get a little bit information about this body of water here. This is the Indian River. Mm -hmm. and it travels all the way from Stony Lake all the way to Rice Lake. And Rice Lake is called that because uh, there used to be wild rice fields that the oh. natives would harvest. Uh -huh. And then once the Trent Canal came in, the Rice Lake flooded and flooded the rice fields. Okay. So it would, uh, there was 12 mills on this river at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a unique situation where uh, Lang Mill here, which was actually called Allendale, but uh, there was an Allendale and Berries, and the post office was confusing. So Squire Lang, that owned the uh, sawmill, which was a squire in this area, uh, they called it Lang. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, he had uh, a sawmill at the other end of the river, uh, and then we have the grist mill here. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Talking about the grist mill, this large building right behind us is the, the grist mill, right? Yes, it is. When was it built? It was built in 1846. Mm -hmm. Prior to the mill being built, the farmers would have to take their grain as far as Coburg wow. to Lake Ontario to the nearest mill. And that's quite a distance yeah, from here, and especially distance. with horses and wagons, that yes. would have taken them a long time. And with the river system that we have and the lakes and that, uh, this area was quite popular because you could use the rivers and the lakes as waterways, as the highways. Okay. So you could travel down them. And oh, you could the actually, yes. they would float the grain they, down. But in their canoes, and uh -huh. then, then they would have to carry it. They might oh, have Lord. to carry 100 pounds of grain exactly. to the mill. That's but, a lot of work. But they had to, to feed their animals because it had to be chopped up. Exactly. And they couldn't feed it the whole grain. Well, that's very interesting. So this building made a huge difference to the farmers oh, uh, uh, in the area. Difference. Okay. Let's head inside. Okay. So this is basically a building that's actually the second mill right at this location, right? Because the first one burnt down? Actually, it, the stone stayed. You'll see a picture inside. Oh, yeah? So there was no explosion, which is a fear of mill. It uh -huh. burnt. So the outside was still standing. They just had to rebuild all the wood inside. Oh. Wow. So the whole interior was rebuilt. Uh-huh. So the stone walls are original from 1840? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. And it was from the river because uh -huh. it was more economical to gather the stone here than to import stone. Exactly. So that when it was, before it was uh, rebuilt, they had the stone grinders and they were smaller ones. Uh, larger ones could have been uh, maybe in Coburg because it would have been easier to get the product here. Right. They just used smaller ones. Very interesting. Smells interesting in yes, here. It does. What is the smell? Would you say? Um, we have a little rail system open. here. Yes, you see the grain would come in. Uh huh. The door. Yeah. They would load it, and then they would stop, and it would be weighed, and then it would go further on. Wow. The would wash it, and, that, and then from after it was cleaned, uh huh. Um, and all the other grains taken out of it, then that's uh, right there. Okay. What is this machine here? This here, they would stop here, mm -hmm. or if they were going to buy somewhere when they brought it into pay, it would be weighed here, and this oh, is a weighing machine. It this is a weighing machine. Weigh. Uh huh. Isn't and that some interesting? Some farmers would say to the, the uh, miller, "You can have all the white flour. All they wanted was the chop that was left to feed their animals." Really? Yes. So the white flour wasn't really all that valuable to them? Not really, no. So they used basically, it for animal feed, basically? Basically, they would have, of course, flour, uh -huh. and they might have brought that from the, the general store. Uh, unless he had a product, a grain that he specialized in, and he would keep that. Oh, okay. And he would pay for it. But they would keep a certain amount for yes, home baking. for home baking. Yeah. And that's where the miller would make his money. Right. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. But the white flour really had no nourishment in it. Yeah. Uh, now we do because we put we enrich it and put nourishment back in. So white flour in itself doesn't have no, great nutritional no, value. No, not at all. Okay, so it's the husk basically of the corn the, or the grain. The that, rest of it. The yeah, rest of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Wow. 
Mrs. There we go. Miller. Okay. Uh, she's giving a tour of a camp, a day camp. Uh huh. So obviously a popular spot for education. Oh yeah. And Francis is 74 years old. 72, yeah. Let's see. An elevator in a mill is like a Ferris wheel going round and round. It goes from the basement to the third floor. It's about 60 cups on the belt. And these long, tall, skinny things are called legs. And in the legs are the elevators. And at the bottom of all the legs, there's a U-shaped thing called a boot. Now, if my boot is full of grain and a belt comes down through, what's it going to do with all those hard kernels of wheat in the boot? Which way are the cups going? Up, so it'll scoop up all those hard little kernels of wheat, take them up to the third floor, and then the wheat is going to come down to the machine in behind the cage and get made into flour like you made me. Then the flour is going into the boot here. Now where is it going? Which way is it going? Up. Up to be sifted. And when it gets sifted, it's going to come back down to that cone-shaped thing over there. So that's how the grain and the flour is transported, is by these elevators. Now, children, We've got a track and we've got a cart. And those bags of grain are heavy, and I don't want to carry them, and neither did the young men who work here. So we push the cart to the door, put the bags of wheat grain on the cart, and then we push it in, and then we weigh it on the big scale. That's how farmers make money. They grow grain and they sell it to the mill, okay? Uh, when you're going back home today, and if you see something like that red thing outside a farmer's barn, you know the farmer bought a tractor, and now he can do his chopping of his grain to feed his animals. He doesn't have to leave the farm to come to a mill anymore. So that's why we don't use our mills anymore, because farmers chop their own grain to feed their animals. Chop. So do you want to go upstairs? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we have some rolls. I hope